Cristiano Ronaldo has broken his silence. Quizzed on the rumours linking him with a move to Al Nasser, CR7 provided an unequivocal response. The Portuguese skipper currently finds himself without a club after having his contract terminated early by Manchester United. A situation which has sparked the interest of Saudi Arabian based side Al Nasser. And the offer that has been made by them, quoted by several sources, is simply staggering. Marco reported just a few days back that the total value of CR7's contract with Al Nasser would be close to $200 million a year making him the highest paid athlete in the world. $200 million for two seasons. That said, a club official confirmed that CR7 was yet to agree to the deal. But a source close to the Saudi Arabian side has indicated that serious discussions are underway. But they did specify that further details do still need to be ironed out before an agreement can be made. But the man in question has finally spoken himself. It seems as though Ronaldo needs some more time to think about his next move, especially as he's occupied away in Qatar at the moment for the World Cup with the Portuguese national team. Ronaldo was unceremoniously dropped for the Portugal starting lineup against Switzerland. Despite the team's on pitch success, Fernando Santos has come in for some scathing criticism from Ronaldo's entourage. Georgina Rodriguez, CR7's partner, was in the stands watching watching their 6-1 demolition of Switzerland. She was quick to congratulate the team on their stunning performance, but lamented the manager's decision to relegate the side's record goalscorer to the bench. What a shame not to have been able to enjoy the best player in the world during the 90 minutes. The fans have not stopped clamouring for you and shouting your name. One of his sisters, Elma, chipped in, posting this on Instagram. It's a disgrace to humiliate a man who has given so much. Fernando Santos was forced to explain his decision after the game. Me, I think of this team as a collective. I've got a close relationship with him. I've known him since he was 19 years old and we forged a strong relationship. The human aspect was never misunderstood. I'm the coach, he's a player, he knows what to do during the game. For me, he's an important player for the side. Well, it's hard to argue with his reasoning when the replacement, Gonzalo Ramos, steps in and scores a sublime hat-trick to lead his team to victory. Nevertheless, CR7 got his hero's reception as he came on for a 20-minute cameo being substituted onto the pitch on the 73rd minute. A welcome that warranted a response from Bruno Fernandes. It's normal that people come to the game to watch Ronaldo. He's the most well-known player in history, potentially sport in general. It's normal that there's clamour for him. I don't see anything surprising in that. But attentions now turn to the upcoming quarterfinals. Croatia take on Brazil first on Friday. And Vinicius Jr. touched on the subject of Brazil's star man, Neymar, ahead of the encounter. A realização de um sonho, né? Eu acompanho a carreira toda do Ney e sempre foi meu maior ídolo, né? Eu sempre acompanhei bastante, sempre quis estar perto dele, sempre quis estar fazer as coisas que ele fazia dentro de campo e, e com o passar do tempo ele foi, foi virando um amigo, hoje é, é um irmão que, que me dá muitas dicas e que, e que todo jogo antes de, de começar ele tira toda a responsabilidade que tem em cima de mim, em cima do Rafinha, em cima do, do Paquetá e o Richarlison que são os, os jogadores mais, mais novos, né? ele tira toda essa responsabilidade, puxa essa responsabilidade para ele mas eu acredito também que ele, que ele tem a tranquilidade que, que pode confiar na gente no, nos momentos importantes. E estar junto com ele é, é viver um sonho que, que nem todos podem, podem viver. E, e é, é o nosso melhor jogador, é o, o ídolo da, da maioria da, da galera que está aqui. E a gente fica feliz de, de estar perto dele. Then it will be over to Argentina to do battle with the Netherlands. Virgil van Dijk is ready for the threat posed by talisman Lionel Messi. Well, first and foremost about one of the best players of all time, maybe Leo Messi, obviously he's, he's done it for so many years. Um, I would say him and Cristiano Ronaldo have been, you know, the two stand-up players of the last two decades and there's only respect towards what they, what they achieved. And, um, for us now, obviously, it's not the case of preparing just for him. We're preparing to beat Argentina and, and obviously we know how big of a part he is of their success um, over the years. Um, so yeah, that's the full focus. So, who do you think will qualify for the semi-finals? No. 
tu vas me prendre pour un fou, mais vraiment. Mais je pense que si on passe les poules, et on va passer les poules, Inch'Allah, on va aller en quart de finale, on va être la surprise. On va faire, tu vois, très bien, ils ont fait Ghana en 2010. Ouais. On va faire comment Sofiane Bouffal saw it, then he achieved it. Morocco topped their group before beating Spain to reach the quarterfinals of the 2022 World Cup. And up next, they face Portugal, fresh from their 6-1 demolition of the Swiss. As the Moroccans' victory over Spain was sealed, there were scenes of jubilant celebrations across Europe, most notably in France, Belgium and Italy. And there was even pandemonium in Spain. Estamos muy contentos, eh, no nos cabe la felicidad en el cuerpo. Si hubiera ganado España estaríamos igual de contentos porque recibimos aquí, es nuestro país también, tenemos nacionalidad española, pero Marruecos no ha ganado un mundial y entonces estamos muy contentos y no nos cabe la felicidad en el cuerpo. Por fin hemos podido hacer historia después de 36 años, hemos pasado a octavos eh, y estamos súper ultra felices, nos hemos podido juntar toda la comunidad árabe a celebrarlo con muchísima paz. Unfortunately, in Italy, there were unsavory scenes as fans were racially abused as they celebrated their side's momentous victory. Il Corriere de Your Sport reported that there were several distasteful incidents that took place in the aftermath of their shock win. One video circulated on social media featuring Morocco fans adorned with the flag on motorbikes being targeted by belt-wielding thugs in the streets of Verona. Reports emanating from the agency Reuters suggest that 13 right-wing militants were arrested after clashes with Moroccan fans. In a statement, Italian authorities confirmed that Moroccan fans celebrating in the streets of Verona their round of 16 victory were attacked by a group of men dressed in black. Morocco now could become the first ever African nation to reach the semi-finals of the World Cup if they can beat Portugal on Saturday. And that game will precede the heavyweight encounter between England and France. England defender Kyle Walker was quizzed on the prospect of facing Kylian Mbappe in a press conference. Yeah, you have to use a little bit of nous. You can't be a speedboat without no driver. You need to obviously use your brain when needed. Um, and you know, I can't get as tight to him as I probably will do on some other players. That's just, you know, the nature of the game. I remember playing against Theo Walcott once and I've tried to get so close to him and all of a sudden he just spins in behind you and you kind of think, well, that's your lesson taught. Um, and you need to make the, the, the mistakes that you make are not costly mistakes. He's going to get the better of whoever plays at right back. He, he's going to get the better of you one, two, three, three occasions a game. He's a great player, but you need to make that them occasions are as few as possible and not as costly. So who do you think is qualifying for the semi-finals? 